Hello and welcome once again on this Monday afternoon. It's been a few weeks, hasn't it? It really has. We've had that many bank holidays. Um, I've done. We've been coming and going, but I'm here, and that's what's that's what's important. We're here for some regular have a go fun. So if anybody new out there is just um, tuning in for the first time, might I just introduce myself? My name's Simon Williamson, and I'm here from the Have a Go Ink Designs, and I'm here to give you some inspiration with our fabulous products. Uh, today we're going to be using the Monster Graffiti Monster Collection, which is just it's just brilliant i'm gonna say so funny these characters i'm sure you're gonna have some great fun um so like i say we're, we're on across um, a few different platforms so if you want to keep um updated with the latest news with avago inc just hit that like and subscribe and then we'll make sure you get the information first um so it's nice to see that people are joining so i can see um, we've got linda on we've got people also joining us across other platforms as well so thank you for your time today and it's um get back, back into a bit of routine now isn't it hopefully every Monday at the same time. So let's have some fun then. So if there's any questions you want to ask on the way, just put QQQ in the comments and I'll answer them as we go. But other than that, let's get on with our first demonstration. And this one, I thought were just a lovely kind of fun card. And this is just showing you how we can make them sentiment stretch to make a full background. Uh, hi, Joanne, thanks for joining. And you can see I've got wobbly eyes on these. I thought it just added a little bit more detail to it. So let's get into making this first one. So I've got um, a black top fold card, which I'll just check the size so you've got it. It's just about, just a little bit under six by eight. And I've just created a mat that's just slightly smaller. So I've got a nice border going around the edge. So I'm gonna now then work on this to give our design. I always seem to cut them before I make them. I just, it's the way I work. I know other people make them bigger and then chop them down, whichever you prefer to do. So I'm just gonna get a piece of paper. We can work on there. And then I'm going to get some, some masking tape. Now, normally I have low tack, but I couldn't find it today. So this one's is what I'm going to be using. But I'm going to put it onto my arm just to take some of the residue off, first of all, so it's not as sticky. I don't want it to tear the card when we take it back off. So if you've got some masking tape, just take some of the residue off. And then let's just pop a piece going across there. And you don't have to be precise as well. Keep this a little bit haphazard but it adds to it really going that way taking that off so it's not sticky you don't want to ruin your artwork do you so a little bit of time doing this at the beginning there we go you can see I've just got some like stripes cut through. And the reason I'm doing that is to mask off them areas so that we can put sentiments onto them later. But we need to get some background colour on this first of all. So I'm going to get that lovely stencil, which is the Graffiti Monster stencil. Oop, I'll just get out of this tub. And that's that really big, crazy design. If I'll open it, you can see. Oh, that's like little splats into it going off. But it's so good for these monsters. It really adds to these collections. So I'm going to use this on this actual background first of all. I'm not bothered about where it lines up. I just want to get this on as a base. I'm going to use these two colours for this. I've got the hedgerow green and the indigo purpley blue kind of colour. I'm going to use two different tools. I'm going to use the bigger brush to get a background colour and then the smaller brush to get some like real pop of colour to get some more detail in there. So let's go in with the green first of all. You've got your scrap paper here, so if you need to take some excess off, you can do. Okay, so just going to rub that green into the top areas. It's going to give you quite a soft kind of design. This, this is what I want. I don't want it to be overbearing. Although, if you know me, you know that um, I like the bright colours. Irene says, sorry, she's late. It doesn't matter, Irene. I really appreciate you joining us. Just taking that green across, just to give us our first layer. I'm going to move the stencil down now, and we can get these other areas. And just continuing that light kind of green going through. Not putting too much pressure on this, I don't want to make it too heavy. And it does make a lovely background, this on its own, I've got to say. And then just, I think I've got a little corner down there to get a little bit more around this side. 
If I take that off, you'll see how lovely does that look already. So we kind of a washy effect, but it still gives a great background. What I want to do is go in with a darker colour now. So I'm going to switch this up. And I'm going to go to this purpley indigo colour we've got. I'm going to keep this. It doesn't matter that these colours mix because I'll clean the brushes after. But I just want to put... So you, you know these, like, these bigger areas on this stencil? I think these look like eyeballs, and that's what I've been basing it on. So I'm going to put some of the larger designs just into that kind of light area and going over the green. And we've got the little detail brush, so we can put a little bit more pressure on and make that a bit darker. If it goes over, it doesn't really matter. But you can see what I'm saying, just trying to isolate these areas. Let's get some of these bigger pieces now where we want them. So I think we're going to go just fine. There we go. Like this one. So we're just going to take that up there. Use that detail brush. Get quite a strong purple going through there. And it breaks up that green and has a little bit more contrast. And you can push it in with these little detail brushes. You can see it'll really make that pop. And then when we take the tape off, you'll get a different kind of impression as well. So let's try and find another one that's quite a big one. That one's a big one, look. So it's got a nice loop to it. So we'll just take that colour up. And just push that darker colour as precise as you can do. If you find these brushes a little bit too fiddly for you, I've used cotton buds in the past. That works well. I'm just going to highlight some darker areas and keep going down here. So let's go this way. We'll have one coming from the top down. Just have a bit of fun, really. Mix your colours up. Lou says, nice to see you. Melanie's on. Well, lots of you joining now. It's been a bit, hasn't it? So that, that many bank is happening, though. At least uh, we've done with them now for a bit. <laughs> so just pushing that purple again. And then let's get another larger one. Oh, there's a really big one. Let's have that one there, look. We'll just put a few more of these in to break it up. And then on that. And you can put your stencil away, you can just see. So you can see I've got kind of a lighter stripe going down here. I just want to break this up a little bit and put one down here, or else it'll look a little bit unbalanced. So let's get this one coming in from off the edge. And I think we'll have a bit of a, a splat one there, just a thinner one. And we'll just break a bit of purple down there to break it up. There you go. You can see I've gone for two colours that really clash just to add a little bit more effect to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to peel this tape off and that's going to give us as areas where we can put the sentiments then. So hopefully this is going to peel off nicely because I've taken the residue off. There we go. It's always nerve-wracking this bit, isn't it? You don't want to take hard. I'll we'll just that one off. Here we go. I'll just pull this last one off. Oh, it's a bit stickier, this one. Hopefully it'll not tear it. There we go. I'll get rid of that backing paper as well, so you can see a little bit easier. There you go. So you can see now we've got some kind of like abstract triangles going across the actual design, and that gives us some areas we can put sentiments into now. So using the sentiments that you get in the Graffiti Monsters, I've got, there's quite a few on there, so, oh, sorry, wrong way around. There's quite a few on there, you can see, that are quite bold. So I kind of prefer the ones on a single line, but you can choose whatever you prefer. So I'm going to go for the Surprises one. And then we've got the Hooray. And then we've got Party Monster. So I think we'll work with those. We've we got another one we could use. Let's have a think. I think we'll get away with that one as well. You're out with this world. So we're just going to put these onto a stamping block this time, rather than using the platform. We'll go with a surprise first. 
I'm just going to make sure that's well linked. And I'm just going to eyeball down the centre of these stripes that we've made. OK, so we're going to put the surprise down here. I'm going to continue that across. If you go a bit wonky, it really don't matter. Just get that sentiment going across in the stripe. That's a surprise one done. And then we've got Hooray. Oh, we nearly went upside down then, look. Let's get Hooray going across here. And I'm sure you've all got sentiments at, sentiments at home that you could be using as well. So it's good to um, kind of design this to use with the bits you've got. The party monster. Let's get that one in the middle. And then we'll stamp party off at this edge. And the monster back off at this edge. Well, I'm liking how this is building up now. And then we've got that last one, which is you're out of this world, which is perfect for this card. And it must have got as little kind of character going to be going on in a second. There we go. So that's our sentiments all done. So move that to one side. And I really like this, how it's coming together. But I just kind of think it needs a little bit more detail if I show you. Let me sell this up for you. You see, the kind of still has, um, like, the sentiments get lost a little bit because it's pale. So then we're going to go in now with a fine liner and we're going to come up with some designs to actually make these pop a little bit more. So all I'm going to do is freehand a design across here. So this one's going to be a little bit loopy, I think. So we'll do a loopy design. And it just gives you kind of an edge to where you put your sentiment. Have a bit of fun as well. I know a lot of um, people out there do the Zentangle. You could come up with some really creative kind of like ideas. So let's have a bit of a wave on this one. Underlining that surprise sentiment. I'm just going to double that up so it's a little bit more wavy. And then on this party monster, let's have um, like a dot on a dash, I think. Just continue that across. You could do whatever you want, really, on these. Just it's just to give it a little bit more of a, an edge. Take that across. Oh, the concentration into it. <laughs> and then this last one, I think we'll go for like a zigzag. But it's just it gives you a little bit more detail without having to layer up too many layers. If I just take that off there now, you'll see when I put that onto my, my black card, how much that's going to pop. And it's going to, the black's going to bring back in the pen that we've just done. So that's a really good way of doing it. So really nice way of doing it. So let's get that mounted onto there. And then we can add our little character and finishing touches on there for you. Let's go with some wet glue. I want to see it better come out. I've checked so many times today. It's when it's nice warm weather like this, it's, um, it dries the glue out too much. I'll pop that down, make sure we've got a lovely black border going all the way around. And then I think we need a nice little character to go on this one now. So John says that really makes the sentiments pop. Such a simple idea, isn't it? I mean, you could wear the actual um, masking tapes on there. You could actually edge with um, like a bit of a colour to give it an edge. But I like how this is like white on a white base. I think the black light really kind of like pulls it back. So let's just leave that over to one side to actually adhere. And we'll get our little character printed now. So we've got lots of little monsters to choose. If I turn them this way up, you should be able to... Oop. We've got our little friendly monsters there. So I did this one on the previous card. So I think we should go for this one with the horns. It's a really, really good one. And this eye is going to really blend in with the design very well. It's a nice piece of card. It's such a good size into these. And I love their expressions on the face. Let's move that up a little bit. 
Put that magnet on there to hold it. Just gonna use a black ink pad. Give that a good squish down. The tracers, the hot weather is a nightmare for glue paste, the mixed media stuff. With my texture paste, I've gone off. It's terrible, isn't it? It comes to something though where you need a fridge for your art stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> So let's give that another push down. There we are, that's our little friendly monster. I'm going to give some colour to this now. So I'm going to use the, I think the Thirsty Brush, the little ink palettes. I think I used them last week. They're really good, really vibrant colours. And I just love how that you can grab these colours and just take them with you. So let's get some... I think this vibrant pink is lovely, so let's get some of this vibrant pink on there. And they're so nice as well, the glide on the card, which is what you want. I hate um, paints that are a bit too thick to use. So we're just going to take that lovely pink around his horns and into his hair. Look at his little face. That's me when they've run out of carvery. That's what I look like. So we'll just let this pick down, down to the bottom here where it zigzags. Just brush that across. And round the other side. I'm going to make him a little bit paler at one side so it looks a little bit more dimensional when we mount him up. And I think, should we give him a different contrasting colour just to make him pop? Why do we put um, a little bit of this green in? And we'll give him a green eyeball. Little green horns. I should have shaved some of his teeth and I think. Bless him. You can have fun as well. You can put some more detail into there, but I think that's enough for today. I'm just going to grab my heat gun now. Give that a quick blast. That we all doing anyway with the lovely weather. It's nice for it not to be raining, isn't it? Maury says it's all good here. John says, I'm on the East Coast for a wave of some warm weather. Oh, bless you. Hmm? I forgot it had two settings and it carried on. Just move that out of the way. I'm going to bring in my um, plates now so I can get this little character chopped out. So I'll just get the corresponding die. Hmm? I brought too much stuff. I enjoyed it all so much. I brought everything in case I needed it. So they really go around the outline very easily. So you can see you can line up with the horns and you can see where it goes around his lower body. I'm just going to grab some of that masking tape just to hold it in place. I'll just put it there. A little bit on the edge there. Oops. Tell if I stuck it on the actual die. A little bit down here. We'll trap that in there and then we'll run it through. Still no music on this. So, did any of you have a go as managed to come to the open day here at out of, as that was by me? I think it were Carly and um, Sarah Gray, weren't it? It looked like a really fun day. I were working, unfortunately. And I think we just need to make this pop a little bit more. So I have a, I have a bit of a collection of wobbly eyes, and I thought these were great fun for this. You can see I've got quite a selection. I've got some that are really funny ones that you could put over his eye. You can see you may give him like an eyelid. That's, I think, though, because it's quite a big eye, that one. Let's, let's put my big eyeball on as well. Just get that 
blue on the back. Just to add a little bit more detail to him. Just hold that in place a second. There you go. So you can change him up a little bit, give him a wobbly eye. Let's pop him up there. And I'm going to keep these wobbly eyes just to the side, but I'm going to use a few more of them. But I want to start building my card up so I can see where I want to put things. So first of all, let's get our little character on a bit of a foam pad to raise him up. I'm going to put him at the bottom, I think. In fact, I'm going to put him at an angle so it looks like he's sliding down this kind of line that we've created. He looks brilliant there. And then the idea was is that where we've got these purple bits, it can be like eyeballs looking at you. So if I get a few different size wobbly eyes, and we can put some of these on these just to break it up. And it's like an extra little monster just peeking its little face through. So put a few different sizes on. That one looks like it's got little hands, look. Like it's saying hello to you all. That's a, a big eye on that one. We'll just have a few more. I think we'll just have one up at the top there. And I think that's going to finish this card off nicely then. All this glue sticking again. I thought I'd done so well with the heat. <laughs> Push that into place. Just move that out of the way. And how cool does that look? Your first card. That's just a simple way of how you can mask off that um, stencil area, add your two tone colours, and get them sentiments repeating with them kind of abstract borders. And then wobbly eyes. Just look at that background stencil. It makes it look like there's more aliens going on than just the one that you coloured in. So it's great fun, that card, and I'm sure you could uh, mask off your own designs at home with the sentiments you've got, and it just gives you a different background, a different way of using them stencils. So hope you've enjoyed that first one. I'm going to set it up for the second de uh, demonstration, and I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. So Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see. Pull it all together and make something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and there's little owl collection. And the main crux of the actual design is that there's a big image there, and a little characters you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so it can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments, and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that lovely inspirational video from the Avago range. Just shows you how versatile this collection is and how much inspiration you can have to use with your own products. So let's get into the second demo. Now this one, I think it's just a really cool card and it shows you how well those backing papers really stand out. Oh, nearly fell over. Um, and I love these backing papers because they've got the kind of like glitter texture in them. So they're not glittered, but they've got that glitter effect and it really makes this create this... Um, collection pop with a vibrancy and it's really simple this one so let's get on to this one so the first thing we're going to do is make the background for our card which is really simple i've got a piece of i've got a card blank i've got a pink square of card which is seven and a half square and then i've got a piece of the lovely background paper from my new collection which is seven and a quarter square and that's going to give us a lovely mat and i could just stick it down like this but I want to give it a little bit more texture, so I've brought the um, corner chomper. So let's round these corners off. I'm using the R10. I'm saying that now in case I forget which one I'm on. 
I'm just going to take all them corners off. Same with the pink one. I love how this changes your card as well. It's just little details, isn't it? And then let's do our card blank as well. So just ease that in a little bit. Make sure it's fully into the actual chomper. Ooh, I'm going to turn it over so I can just see a little bit better. There you go. There we go. It's always a little bit uh, thicker to go through on the corner. It's like a gun shot. I'm all right, though, I promise you. There you go. I'll just get rid of all them little bits that we don't need. So first thing I'm going to do is going to get this background set up for our card. It's so simple, and I just love this paper. I want you to see a big piece of it. So let's get a bit of this pink down first. Mount that so we've got a nice white border going all the way around it. Ooh, slips a little bit. Let me just move that down a little bit. There we go. Give that a good push down. And look at this paper. It's like a deconstructed watermelon, isn't it? With little pips and the little glitter dots. But I love it. I love the colours. And it means that whatever colour you want to use for your monsters, it's always going to tie in, isn't it? Just going to pop that on now. Make sure we've got our little border going all the way around. Look at that. How fabulous does that look as a card base for your card? So it's going to be a real focal point when we build this up. So we need to work onto the actual square in the centre now. So I'm going to leave that to one side for the glue to go off. I'm going to bring in... So that's going to be our panel that we're going to use for the centre. And I've got another square that's just going to mat and layer on top. So we've got a little border. But I'm going to round the edges exactly the same so that we've got consistency going through here. So R10. I keep having to remind me which one I've done. So I, did, I made this up as like um, prep. And I changed the art, the corner, and I couldn't work out why it weren't matting and layering right. <laughs> I realised I used different sizes. Got a bit carried away. There we go. Move them bits out of the way. So we've got a nice little character now, area to put our sentiment in the middle. And I had fun with this one, so I've never done this before. So I never thought about masking off in a colour. But what I'm going to do is use one of the dies from the Little Monsters. So you can see this one here, it's got like a lovely, oops, sorry, it's got like a little horn shape to it. I thought this was a really good way of putting a sentiment into the card. So we're going to just cut him out of a piece of scrap card, and we're going to use that to mask off the area that I'm using. So here's a bit of scrap that we use from another demo. Just quickly run that through. So I've always masked off like in squares and circles. So I thought this would add a little bit more detail. And that's going to give us a lovely kind of shape look that we're going to use in a second. So I'm going to bring up my stamping platform. And what I want to do is decide where I want the sentiment to be. So I think we're going to go for the centre just so it's really prominent on this one. And let's have a big sentiment. So what we've got, we've got beware, monster coming, you have a monster birthday, monster birthday wishes. Let's have a monster birthday wishes. And I'm just going to check before you do this that that's going to sit nicely within the mask shape that you've got, and that does perfectly. Let's put that dead in the centre. Put the magnet on so it doesn't move. Oh, I'm not on my weed to fix, I can't move this magnet. Ooh. Pick that up. And let's do that in that midnight black. I love these sentiments as well, because they really do pop on your cards. And this is a good way of making your sentiment look bigger than it actually is. 
There we go. So we'll get that off. What we're going to do now is you can see that little um, cutout that we've made. We're going to put that over the area that we want to mask. We're going to hold that just over there, look. I'm going to use my finger to do most of this. I'm just going to bring in some colours. So the first one I'm going to bring in is, in fact, I'm just going to move this stamping platform out of the way so I've got a little bit more room. Getting too giddy, look. I'm getting too giddy. There we go. A bit easier for me to hold that way. I've got a bit of rough paper as well. So I've got the surfboard blue. And I'm also going to bring in the bittersweet orange. And I'm just going to grab, where did I put my little brush? Here we go. So I'm going to use the background blue just to show where this character is. So let's get some of that lovely blue kind of colour. I'm just going to just brush outwards from him. I'm not bothered if there's some lines, but I kind of like that effect. It looks like it's bursting through. Just going to drag that out. And then I'm going to just turn this a little bit. Keep your fingers where you need it to be. And then we'll do the same down this edge. Trust me, it'll come together, this. I'm trying to just not have a harsh edge towards the end. If there's any arch edges, I want them where this character is. Just dragging that blue out, make it a little bit more powerful. And then I'll just turn that back around this way. And then with a little detail brush, if you really want to, you can just circle in a little bit more depth of colour just around him. Just so it really pops when we lift this off. Just sticking that round. Like a little haze then, isn't it? Just sticking that round this other side. Get some of that little blue up. Brilliant. So now what I want to do is bring in, whoop, bring back in that stencil that we used earlier. I'm just going to have to let go of this just a second. Just make sure that lines up nicely. Just make sure that's there. I'm going to place that over the top now of everything. So we've still got our mask underneath. You've got somewhere you can hold with your fingers. And then we've got this outer area, which we're going to use this vibrant, bittersweet orange on, just so we have a real contrast. So I'm going to clean off my brush. And I'm going to hold this down. And then, in fact, I wonder if I'd be better. Might be better off with a bigger brush. Let me do that so I can hold it a little bit better for you. Let's just get some of that orange just coming on from the edge. Just so we get that shape going. Take that around to the side. Turn that around a little bit. You could put a little bit of sticky tape on the back of the monster mask, but I did find it sometimes rips the sentiment, so I find it best myself to hold it as I go. Just that little bit. And then I'm going to just pop in with this orange and just darken up just a few patchy areas, just have a little bit more. You don't have to be too accurate. It's when you take this stencil off, it gives you a real pop of colour anyway. Turn it back that way. Right, we're ready for the big reveal. So let's take that off there first of all. So that gives you a really crazy background. I'm going to move it off this paper so you get the full effect. And then look when we take this sentiment out. It just makes that monster really pop. It looks three really dimensional, doesn't it? But it's not. So, and then them colours, we matte and layer them up again, are really just going to add to this kind of effect of all these colours coming together to go with this backing paper. 
Let's get a bit of glue on that panel. Get that mounted onto there. Bring in our card again. You can see oh, that's really going to pop with what we've done. I need some foam pads on that, I think, to give it a little bit of height. Let's grab some of those. Just pop them to give it a little bit more height on the back. Will they behave in the hell cells today? They don't normally come off from it, do they? I mean, it's decide whether they want it straight or a little bit of a jaunty angle. I think we're going to go a little bit off-centre, actually. Put that on there. And then we just need to finish it off now with some of our lovely little characters. So I've already got some pre-stamped out. Just need to add a little bit of colour to these now. I'm going to continue with these colours, but I'm going to use a slightly darker palette of colours that came, comes in the other um, Thirsty Brush palette. So I think we'll have our lovely little flying monster. Let's get him some colour on there, this lovely purple. They're so good though, aren't they, together? If anybody's got these, share your mates online as well. So I'd love to see what you make with these products as well. I've now seen some lovely cards in the Eureka fan page as well, so I do look at all groups. Just take that purple into around his eye. And I've got this lovely blue. I think we'll have, let's have this big blue monster here. I think these colours work really well with this kind of background colours. So, you, you know what I mean? You've got a bit of continuity by doing it this way. You could also, um, as well, merge your two colours together. So if we do, like, blue down to his arms, look. And then let's switch to green, I think. And we'll give him green legs. Just to break him up a little bit. Have a bit of fun. Have some like um, Zentangled monsters. Or even stamp them onto pattern paper. And then go back in with a white pen just to break them up a little bit. But they really are cool. And you can have so much fun with them. And I think we'll just have one more. This ready colour. Pinky ready. And we'll have this, our little happy blob monster here. Let's get him some nice bright colour. Just brush that round. It's just so happy, aren't they? Just have escaped. <laughs> so Joanne says, loves the dimension and depth it makes. Is that on the sentiment? It's just a really good way of masking off, isn't it? I think sometimes we just tend to stick with circles and squares and it's... I just thought it was a good way of using a bit of scrap paper. So just bringing that around. And then while it's still wet, we'll just bring a little bit of that darker purple into its base. A little bit of that blue, just to... Just give them a little bit more and a depth there. And I think I'll just bring my heat gun up now just to give, make sure they're dried. Give them a quick blast off. So we're all having a bit of a crafty afternoon this today or are we watching this on the sly? <laughs> Just run them through again. Now I'll just bring the dies in and we'll get these little characters chopped out. So we've got our lovely friend here with the three eyes. And that one goes up there. And I've got our little friend with the wings.
And then we've got our other one from earlier when we made the mask. And then this will tie back in, you see, with what we're doing. Put that on there. Get a little bit of masking tape. And we just run them through. I do love a die cut, I've got to say. Jill says, watch it on the slide whilst working. Good on you, Jill. <laughs> Unless your boss has watched it, then you might be in trouble. I'm going to be honest. So we'll just pop those little monsters out. Put them to one side. Here we go. So we've got our characters. I think I'm just going to use one of those little white gel pens. These are the Amala ones. They're really good, these, actually. So I know some don't always stand out, but just adds a little bit more detail. And you can just, just take a little bit more kind of like scribble effect and just break it up. So let's give them a little bit more. Build up them horns a little bit more. erase these pens as well if you, if you haven't got them i think they're coming like a pack of four but they're really good we'll put the details on the website for you it's not um if you haven't got them it's definitely worth getting i've always struggled to get a white pen that goes over watercolor and then just add a little bit of just to break up these little hairy monsters Make this one all fluffy look. There you go. Just gives a bit of dimension. I mean, look at that. It's just got really like a hairy kind of look to him. So let me get some foam pads. I think we'll have, where should we have them? Let's have a thing. We'll have this one down here. I think this one needs to be looking up at this kind of sentiment. I think it works the best there. And we've got our little character flying in on the top. Put a sticky pad on him. And I think we can have him just up there. And how cool does that look? I love how that sentiment in the middle just pops. We're just uh, masking it off in a bit of a shape. Pat says, Simon, are you creating craft? I have got a show coming up, I have. Yes, I will put some details on the page of the Times. Um, but it will be on a Monday. I can't forget the date. I forgot it at the moment. But I will put it on the Avago page. So if you don't already follow the Avago page, Please um, like and follow the page and we'll get that information out to you as soon as I can get the show times. But I have got some shows and these are all going to telly, so that's really exciting. It's been a while since I've been on telly as well, so it's, it's all happening. So I'm glad you enjoyed today's show anyway. So we had two lovely makes, both showing you different ways of masking off to give a bit of a background. So we can see we've got some lovely kind of um, different effects there. I love this card here with the stripes. I think that's just a brilliant way of making your sentiments look bigger than they are. Um, and I just love them paper pads. I just think they're just a, a go-to for me now. So happy that Abigail's done some paper pads because I've been wanting them for ages. And I just think they're brilliant. Really enjoy using them as well. Makes your cards pop. So thanks for joining us today. If you've got any questions, drop me a message. But other than that, I'll see you at 1 o'clock at the same time next week. Thanks very much for joining me today. Bye.